testimony on her heart that she wanted to share. And as I shared with you before, if you have something a little more that's going to take more than 90 seconds, let me know ahead of time. We will plan for it. So I'm going to give this over to Monique for now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, so as many of you know, I had a surgery uh, 10 days ago, I had a cyst removed from my left ovary. And so um, the word of God tells us, Jesus tells us in Luke 8, 39, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. So he tells us to share our testimony. I wanna be obedient in that. And Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. So our testimony has power. And um, I wanna release that because I've had every attack you could imagine come this week uh, because I know that the enemy does not wanna share, want me to share this because it's going to release hope, it's going to release faith, it's going to release healing. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of the week before my surgery. Sunday before the surgery, Faye, I wish she was here, <laughs> um, she gave us all these bracelets um, and for whoever got baptized. So Keegan got one and it was just a bag of bracelets and she said, everybody just pick one out of the bag. Um, this way no one was fighting. So everybody picked and you know, I took the bag home and I saw there was one left in the bag. And I said, I guess I get a bracelet. And I, so I have my bracelet. This bracelet says warrior. And on the other side, it says, I am brave, I am bold. And um, I, I, I asked the girls, what did you say? What did you say? Everybody else said, blessed. So I said, wow, I got warrior. And the Lord had given me that song, um, You Make Me Brave, to worship that week. So I was just on repeat with that. I was like, what a confirmation with this bracelet. It says, I am brave, I am bold. So later on that day, still Sunday before the surgery, um, I'm driving to the shop, right, getting groceries, and the car in front of me, license plate says, Monique. It's not a common name. <laughs> So I'm like, whoa, instantly I see the name and I hear the Lord say, I know you by name, you do not have to worry. I know all the details, all the days of your life. There's no need to worry about this. So I, I have so much peace come over me, I receive it and that's that. So then Monday I'm driving to work and I turn up the radio, Star 99.1 and um, they were sharing, they were saying, we're sharing testimonies about how this radio station has blessed people and we just want to invite whoever on and she comes on and she goes, I had a cyst on my ovary. I'm like, oh gosh. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, but you guys played the song, you know my name. And I was like, oh, same thing the next day. So I'm like, okay, Lord, you're speaking clearly to me. And so that happens Tuesday night, um, two days before the surgery, anxiety comes over me like crazy. And as you all know, we've all been doing a lot of emotional inner healing, a lot of releasing in this church lately. I released a lot. A year ago, I was having this terrible anxiety where I would get shoot out of bed and like fluster to breathe. And I would say all the right things. I would say, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. You have no power, no authority here. Blah, 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 blah. The, the, all the right things, you know? Nothing worked. So <laughs> I was like, what's going on, Lord? But two nights before the surgery, this every, it felt like everything came over me. Fear of death, anxiety. It, I woke up and I was like, I don't know what's going on with <laughs> Marco, right? And I, I was, went in the living room and I just calmly, I gathered up the words, the same words. I said, I don't know what just came in here, but you gotta go in the name of Jesus. You have no authority, no power. And in 10 minutes, I was sleeping peacefully. I was back in bed. And I told, I shared my testimony with Tiffany and I said, it's so weird. I don't know what changed that I had power this time. Whereas a year ago, I could be blue in the face saying the same words and it didn't work. And you know, she was saying, well, you're under authority now, you're consistent and you're being accountable. 
and that increases authority. So, and it was just like that Bible verse too, like when you clean house, everything tries to come back even worse. And that's what tried happening, but it, it had to go in the name of Jesus. So, and it went. So, um, Wednesday night, um, I was packing for the hospital and I said, you know, what books do you want me to bring? Because I'm thinking I'm going to have all this time in the world to read books while there. So, <laughs> I said, um, the Lord highlighted two books to me. Good Morning Holy Spirit that I didn't finish and another book um, that I had finished but I wanted to read again. So, I brought the books. Surgery day is cut, is there. I'm feeling a little eh, in the morning, just okay. I'm oh, getting a little nervous, but I'm like, all right, whatever. And I decided to take out a book, the first book that the Lord showed me to bring, um, Good Morning Holy Spirit. I open it up where the bookmark is. The bookmark is a letter from 2014 that the Lord gave to me. I wrote it, but he wrote it to me. And it said, the first paragraph said, Monique, I can't wait to embrace you in heaven. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna go to heaven soon. I'm gonna meet Jesus soon. <laughs> And I'm like, oh. and then after that it said, but you have so much more to do on earth and you still have a lot of purpose and all this stuff. So I was like, okay. So then I, I go forward a couple paragraphs and it says, you are a warrior. Again, the bracelet confirmation. And I was like, oh my goodness. So the whole letter was so beautiful. I'm bawling all by myself at like in the waiting area. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear, Monique and I go to the nurse to take me and she goes hi I'm Tiffany and I'm like oh and she became my best friend instantly like it was like no I'm like okay she's like this is gonna be your spa day um don't worry about anything she we instantly clicked and she put me at ease and then the next nurse my night nurse um her name was Yvonne who was another mentor in my life so I was just like I asked everybody their name after that I'm like wait what's your name if you're connected to me <laughs> so anyway um, Yvonne comes in at two in the morning, check on me, and she's like, quickly, what book are you reading? And it was the next book that I was reading, so I did have time to read. <laughs> so I'm reading at two in the morning this book, and she was really curious. I got to share the Lord with her. She actually opened up with me about a couple things with her. I got to pray with her, um, lead her to a couple, you know, lead her to the Lord, kind of, and she just was, I was ministering to her, and it was two in the morning, like I said, I had... I wasn't tired, I was energetic, and she was like, I have to just stop you because your eyes look so beautiful right now. She's like, your eyes are just glowing. And I'm like, it's the Holy Spirit here. So, and then the next medical assistant said something about my eyes too, so I knew the Holy Spirit was there. I felt like nothing happened, like nothing, everything went well. There was no malignant cells, praise the Lord. And I just wanna encourage you all to trust the Lord listen to him he is near to you he wants to be close to us and um what else do i have here oh i just want to release faith over you to believe what the word says about you i release faith so that you believe without a doubt that if you are a son or a daughter he is in control and will finish the good work that he began in you i release faith so that you can rest in the lord and trust him no matter what the circumstances and I also ask that all of our spiritual eyes, ears, and hearts would be opened to seeing him and all that he's doing around us in the daily. So I bless everyone. Thank you for listening. Oh, and sorry, I wanted to share with you one little thing because I texted Faye the testimony about my bracelet. And I said, you know, that bracelet you gave me was just so amazing. And she said, oh, I'm so glad you shared that with me because she said I bought one purposely that said warrior and all the others were said, said blessed. And she said, I prayed over the warrior one that the right person would get it and that they would use it that whatever it would come into use for them. So the Lord is faithful. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, praise God. Lord, we just bless Monique. We just bless what you're doing because he's not finished with you yet. There's more coming. Thank you. You and Marco. Got something yeah. good going on. God has for you. So thank you, Jesus. And we just bless that. Complete healing of our body. No more mind, heart, spirit, soul. Complete from top breath to the soles of our feet. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So it's 12.15. Can you guys last another 12, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. 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 Normally at this point, I'd be like, Lord, do you want me to stop? And he's already said no. So I have to. What he, what he, yeah, he wants me to share what I'm going to share with you guys today. Do the best I can. Be quick. Joshua chapter 3, first five verses. If you have your Bibles or something that has a Bible on it, you can turn that. Then Joshua rose early in the morning. He and all his sons of Israel set out from Shittim and came to the Jordan. And they lodged before, before there before they crossed. At the end of three days, the officers went through the midst of the camp. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, with the Levitical priests carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. However, there shall be between you and it a distance of about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you will go. For you have not passed the way before, this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So God brought me to this for a couple of reasons. One, you guys know we've been consecrating 40 days, right? We're at day 33. Next Sunday is the 40th day. We will be together for our final day of consecration. Expecting great things to take place. Be moving, we, things have been going awesome, but more to come. But this is kind of an important thing because Lord is setting up, and as I shared a few weeks ago, I really feel in my heart and spirit, our journey in this, quote, wilderness that's, that we've been in for the last year and a half is slowly coming to conclusion where we're about to cross our Jordan. Amen. Okay? I, don't, I can't tell you it's going to happen next week or when, but it's coming. Really feeling like it's coming close. So he's been preparing us, and he's been leading me to these things. And I want to look at... Three basic things about this thing. First, the waiting. The waiting. So Israel has been marching for 40 years. Now they're finally at the Jordan, and their promised land is across this Jordan River. Literally there. So Moses gets them encamped right at the edge. We're at that edge. That's where we are right now. But listen what he does. He didn't say, okay, everybody, go! He said, wait. First principle is the waiting. The waiting. They waited at the edge of the Jordan. And they waited for how many days? Three days, right? Who else waited for three days before the new beginning took place? Jesus was in the tomb for three days. What happened during those three days? We read in the Old Testament, he went down and did some work in hell to steal the keys of death from hell. Right? We read in the New Testament, he took captivity captive. Okay? In other words, the power of, of death in terms of sin, eternal death, he robbed them and usurped their authority and power because of the blood of Jesus and what he did. So in that waiting of those three days, God was still working. And we're going to see what he does during these three days that's just as important as what he did then. So right now, in our time of waiting, it's not of, well, let's just sit back and wait. It's, God, what is left unfulfilled, undone in us that you need to do? What is still left that you're trying to accomplish with us? What spirit of religion, what things that you're trying to teach us, things that you're trying to do with us? Not just with us regarding this, because... It goes beyond just what we do Sunday mornings and where we physically are. It's about all of us being drawn closer to God and having our lives completely changed. Just because they entered the promised land, that didn't mean 
It was just about the nation of Israel. It was now about the family because something happened that's different in the promised land that I'm going to get you my second point in a second that's completely different than what was taking place in the wilderness. It's very important what God is doing right now. So in our proverbial three days right now, as we are waiting, we need to be pursuing God. What are you doing, Lord? What is left in my life, in my heart, in my spirit that you want to uh, achieve? You want me to get to what place am I supposed to get to? Up here, in here, and physically. For some of us, it's kind of crazy, but we're going to have like the most healthiest physically fitted church there is, percentage-wise, because everyone, part of this consecration, is like getting on this, like, get health thing, spiritually and physically. We're hearing more and more people are eating better, they're starting to exercise again, and on different regimens. Because God created our bodies to be His temple, and we want a healthy temple, right? good strong temple so in the waiting something is going on we've been on the edge of something new and God has been giving us instructions as to what this new thing is going to look like and what are we going to do in it he's preparing us to receive the inheritance he's teaching us how to steward this new thing he wants to do I mean you think about it if you've lived in, anyone who's never had money and plays the lottery and then wins the lottery, within two years they're broke again and bankrupt. Why? Because they did not know how to steward. They weren't trained how to steward it pre beforehand. He's teaching us now how to steward what is to come. How to manage and handle what is to come. This is why this time is so important. It's not a time to be jealous of other churches that, you know, um, are growing and have buildings and all. That's not that. Because he's doing something unique and special here. Okay? It's not about them. It's, Lord, what are you doing in me? And then what? how is it that what you're doing in me is going to translate to what you're doing with us? Okay? So that's the way. Second thing is the guidance. Israel up until this point has been led by a cloud, a pillar of a cloud by day and fire by night. And from what I shared with you guys earlier, and you can read this in Exodus that we talked about, is Israel as a nation were afraid of the presence of God. Only Moses went into the tabernacle to meet with God. And then they would wait for him to tell them what God said. But when they cross into the promised land, there's not going to be a pillar of fire at night and a, a cloud by day anymore. The worship, the relationship is going to shift from this pillar thing into intimate, personal relationship. It's going to have to change. It's going to go deeper. And some things are going to need to take place during those three days to prepare them. To prepare them for this shift in relationship and what it's going to look like. They were going somewhere. And listen to what he tells them. You know, he tells them, stay, stay from away from the ark. The ark's going to go before you. There's a strategy to his plan. The ark is going before you which is symbolic of, now I'm going to go ahead of you and you need to follow me. Keep an eye on me. It's no longer a big cloud that you can either look down and see go all the way. It's look at this. Look at the direction I'm taking you. Look where we're going here. And the, the reason why there's supposed to be a distance. Think about this. If I am following a car in front of me, and I am right up the rear end at the rear bumper. I'm not going to react quick enough when they turn. If I'm too close. If I'm too far, I'm not going to see where they're going. Listen to what Joshua tells them. Do not come near it that you may know which way you shall go. For you have not passed this way before. 
This is not just a physical sense. You're going into a new physical land. He's saying you're, we're doing something new that you've never done before. You've never had to do these things before because you've always had this pillar for the last 40 years. And remember, he's talking to a new generation that were not there in Egypt. This is a new generation that never experienced a slavery in Egypt. All this generation knows, other than Joshua and I think Caleb, is um, the wilderness. So I'm taking you somewhere. New. All this generation knew is the type of relationship that had to do with a pillar of fire and a pillar of a cloud. Saying, I'm taking you someplace new, in a new place, in a new direction, in a new relationship, in a new move I'm doing. You're going to have a new identity. I'm taking you in a way you've never been before. And you better make sure you honor, honor the position and the direction as you flow through this. I'm giving you guidance. They are going to be intimate now in their relationship with him as they enter. And they're going to need that intimacy more than ever because his they're not no longer wandering. They're now taking their inheritance. Anybody with half a brain, when you inherit a large, incredible large sum of money, the first thing you do is get somebody who knows how to manage money that you can trust to honorably manage your money to show you how to steward it correctly. Otherwise, guess what we're going to end up doing with that money? So he's saying, you're going to get this inheritance. You need to stay close to me so I can teach you how to manage your inheritance, to manage this blessing, to manage this new thing, to maneuver, maneuver in the new thing that I'm giving you, the way you're going to have. This is my instruction manual. I am. The, the embodiment of an instruction manual. They needed to follow, and this is why this is important. Think about this. Why did he say, stay 2,000 cubits, don't come nearer than that, but also don't go farther? Because they need to, to keep up with his pace, his direction, the process. Remember, the ark, then the priests and the worshipers, then the people. The process, the order that God has established. And within that, there's his covering, which equates to his protection. When you do things, as Monique mentioned, having covering gives you greater authority. Staying under God's covering provides protection. And within that protection, you have his authority you walk in. So, following the, the, the logical, spiritual process that God established pace, direction, the process and order of it and, pro and protection of it is a, the key to success here it's the key to effectively managing this this inheritance that we're going to have this is what's happening in these three days he's trying to get through to their heads to do this get things right get the process correctly this is me. This is not scriptural. I'm just throwing out one of those weird thoughts that come into my mind sometimes. We know Jesus spent time after his resurrection with his disciples. And he did a bunch of things. But he also did some training. If the disciples would have done during those three days he was in the tomb, what they did while they were waiting for Pentecost, I wonder how things would have been different. Because at Pentecost, they were waiting in faith for the Spirit, or for the promise of the Spirit, right? During those three days in the tomb, they were hiding out. If they had spiritually heard and received what Jesus had been telling them, that I'm going to rise in three days, and they were effectively waiting for those three days the way they waited for those 50 days in Jerusalem, I wonder how things would have been different. 
what might have happened. I don't know, but this is what goes through my head. But this is why it's important. This waiting is not a time of living in fear and just waiting for poof, smoke to happen and something to take place. God is refining us in his fire right now. This is a time of consecration. It's no coincidence we're consecrating these 40 days. Nothing about this is coincidence. So Joshua now, this is the final thing I'm going to share with you. Good, I'm only at 15 minutes. All right. Joshua tells the people, here's the instructions, you know. The ark goes first, the worshipers, the priests, you guys stay this distance. You've never passed here before. This is why you need this. But then he tells them, maybe the most important thing. Consecrate yourselves before crossing the Jordan. Consecrate yourself. Some of your Bibles might say sanctify, but the actual Hebrew word is consecrate. Remember what the word consecrate means. It means position yourself in that place where God wants you to be, where he can send his holy fire to sanctify you. If I consecrate myself and what I consecrate, God sanctifies. He does the sanctification. In other words, he purifies it. He blesses it. He anoints it. He's able to move in it. I just need to put myself in that position for him to do that. If the altar is here, me putting myself in the position here is not a good way of sanctifying it so that the fire will come down because the fire is going to come down here. I need to make sure I'm in the correct position in my heart, in my mind, in my body, in my attitude, in my will, in my emotions to be right where I need to be for God to do this. So Moses says, that's great. Now you know the formula of being in the right position. But now you need to position your heart correctly. Sanctify yourself or consecrate yourself before going into this new thing. Remember, this is a new, some, you're going to a place you've never been before. You've never passed this way before. And to pass means to get through it, get into the new thing. So we are entering a new thing that we've never had before which is going to require a new set of skills, so to speak, spiritually and in other ways, to be able to accurately steward and manage these things. But I can't do it with the old me. The old me is not equipped to do it. I've got way too many faults. Not that I'm going to be perfect when I'm consecrating it, but I am going to be at a different place. I'm going to be at a different level. I'm going to be in a place where God can download new information that I need to better steward. Thank you. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Julie. Better place for God to do what he wants to do. He's taking me to that new level, to the next level. Enemy's not happy about it. That's why he says, consecrate yourself. Make sure you're pure so the holy fire can come. Consecrate, be consecrated to receive the inheritance. Be in the right position to receive what God wants to give you. What God's going to do with you. How, what God's going to release in you. God wants us prepared to receive impurity. As best that we can. We need to be able to handle what we are receiving and what is coming. What is about to come. God on God wants us to be ready to be entrusted with this. Think about it. When a father hands over a business to his son or daughter, he wants to know that the son and daughter can handle continuing the business, effectively running the business. The father's been teaching them the business model since the day they were born. Your Heavenly Father has been preparing you for this new thing that you're about to pass that you've never passed before. 
since the day you were born. Sometimes we were rebellious and decided, I don't want to do this. But now we're at that place where we're saying yes. So now it's time for God to do the final tweaking he needs to do for this new place that we're about to enter that we've never passed before. This new thing he's going to do. And he wants to be able to entrust because just like a natural father is not going to turn over his business to his son or daughter till he knows they're ready to handle it. And they're surrounded by people who will help them manage it because you're never a lone ranger. So God wants to trust us and he wants us to know that we're ready to do this. So what do we have to do to do this? Just like Israel. He said, he told them before you even get in that physical line to proceed to cross the Jordan, go home and consecrate yourself. Yeah, amen. Go home and do what you need to do to get right. Get right, get ready. I mean, think about it. In the natural, the first day of a son or daughter is walking in as the new CEO of this company, what do they do? They're going to go get a makeover, going to get a haircut. Son's going to buy a new suit. The, the daughter's going to, you know, buy some new clothes because now you want to look the part and present yourself in the part. God is saying, position yourself so I can clothe you for the part. You don't have to worry about going to Saks Fifth Avenue. You're going to put on my robe of righteousness, my garment of salvation, and you're going to put on my Holy Spirit, and you're going to put out, cover yourself with my blood. You're going to be receiving my fire, covered in my fire. My anointing oil is going to be dripping off of you. I'm just releasing that. I see that on you, some of you guys right now. Yeah. Lord, thank you. More. More. Pour it down. Let it flow. Pour it down. More fire, Lord. More fire. More, Lord. More. <laughs> more, Jesus. Yeah. More, Lord. More. More, more, more. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So, whew. So, we have to get in that right position before receiving that inheritance. We, we consecrate ourselves. Lord, I consecrate myself. We've been doing it for 40 days. This last week, Lord God, whatever is left to be done, let it be done. Lord God, whatever thing you want to remove, let it be removed. Whatever thing needs to be wiped clean, wipe it clean. Place yourself in that position right now. I'm speaking this over you. Receive it and do it. Where he's sending his fire to do this. Lord, what is left, let it be. I don't want a speck. I don't want anything of my past, even yesterday, of yesterday, that's going to keep me from accurately stewarding this new thing that you're about to entrust me with. I'm just, and I want everything that I will need to help me walk into it. Step into it. Don't leave anything unturned, Lord. Don't leave anything unturned. I want to encourage you to just open up your hands. Open up your hands, open up your arms. It's, it's, it's a reflection and symbol of not holding anything in, but just saying, here I am. Here's all of me. There's no side hugs with God right now. We're embracing it and receiving it all. Yeah, Lord, more. More, Lord. Father, I just declare over myself and this body that we consecrate ourselves and position ourselves in the exact place you want us to be in order to move forward with you in receiving 
attaining, achieving, doing, accomplishing, and fulfilling what you have for us. This new thing that you are doing. This beautiful new thing that is happening right now and is about to happen. We are willing to say goodbye to the old. Any remnants of yesterday, we're willing to throw away and attain a brand new wardrobe. Attain a renewed mind. Attain a pure heart, a humble heart. walk with your attitude and your spirit. In a new way. Just stay like that. Just continue to receive. God is just doing some stuff right now. seeing is more influence in some of you over people. What I'm seeing, God's going to be highlighting specific things, people to you, that you're going to go speak to and love on. And God has been preparing them for you. Even people or somebody that may have rejected when you try to love on them the way Jesus wants you to in the past, they're going to be in a position to receive it because he's been priming their hearts. See new ministries sprouting within the body and outside the body because you're a priest not of Bayshore Christian Fellowship, but you are a High Priest of Jesus Christ in the Kingdom of God. Thank you. See a release of new giftings and anointings. Thank you, Lord. More. And I just want to encourage some of you. Shut down the lie that says, well, I didn't consecrate the first 33 days, so what's the point? That's a lie from hell. If you make that choice now, or you want to amp up your consecration now, from this point on, go ahead. Go ahead. God will honor you and bless you. God will honor that. And he's going to work in it. It's never, ever too late with Jesus. Ever. 